Namaskar. In part one, we talked about Nagas, how they are depicted in temples, and what was the reason for them vanishing from Bhuloka and where they were and what was expected. Now, in this part, you're going to go a little bit back and also move forward back to understand how Nagas were born and who were their uh, originators, where did they come from, and also some of the other things that characterize the Nagas. For example, what exactly is the Naga money? Is this associated with the Nagas or is it associated with snakes, which it is believed that if they don't you know, spit out the poison, that poison congeals and becomes a stone that is on their forehead. It is right not on the top, but it kind of, uh, you need to price it out of the snake. The snake will still live, but it's a bit of a painful thing for the snake to undergo or, or to endure while that is done. So there are lots of videos on YouTube that you can see to understand this process. I don't know whether it is, see some people say that somebody puts the a stone in first and then they take it out to make it look as if this is a naturally occurring stone. So I'm not going to um, you know argue about that. All I'm trying to say is there are videos that you can see that tells you about Nagamani and extracting the money from the forehead of a cobra for example. So this magical world of Nagas part 2 continues from where we left off last time. Are the Nagas misunderstood? If yes, why? And what is so special about them? We told, we told about how they can create illusion or maya in our eyes. And that was something that I had described in some detail in part one. So here we take a look at what happened to the Nagas from the very beginning. They are perhaps the most misunderstood race of all people and are depicted wrongly in much of the media or in modern texts. From the point of view of Sanatanis and Hindu texts, Iconography and symbolism are used extensively to explain the character of each personality. The poetry and various texts also include all the symbolism and iconography. For example, Shakti slash Mahakali sometimes is depicted with 1008 hands, sometimes 108 hands. What? 1008 hands? That looks very unreal even to think. Now, if we are to think Shakti as a personality with 1008 different types of knowledge wisdom and 100 and different types of electromagnetic forces then the significance of 1008 slash 108 could be easily understood these are superhumans i mean they had more than one uh, characteristic trait for example why is dashanan by the way dashanan not dashasan one time i wrongly said it as dashasan it is dashanan or ravan had is sometimes depicted with 10 heads. The same thing. The guy was so brilliant, he was so good at so many things that it looked as if he had 10 heads. Similarly, Nagas are also depicted uniquely with symbolism and iconography. Before we start describing them, let's understand how human beings, animals and plants, in other words, the various living forms were created. So we are going right back to the creation time. Sage Kashyapa. Sage Kashyapa is the father of various races, Devas, Asuras, Nagas, Manushas and also flying animals, walking animals, crawling animals, swimming animals and plants. Sage Kashyapa is one of the Sapta Rishis, seven Rishis, the primary disciples of Shiva. There is a different story about Sapta Rishis, I am going to do that as a separate episode in the next few weeks, so just stay tuned for that one. We have Naga at least three or four parts. After that, we will go on to some other stories. Sage Kashyapa was ageless, timeless, and he had a youthful bearing and is revered as the progenitor of all living beings, including gods, demons, and humans. He is the son of creator god Brahma and is believed to possess immense powers. The characteristics of his particular wife slash mother of each race determine the main quality of that particular race. For example, Kadru is a strikingly beautiful woman with a tawny complexion and her eyes are orange brown in color. As you can see the representation here, Nagas were born to Kadru and Kashyapa. Kadru in Sanskrit means tawny and it's a mixture of yellow, orange and brown colors and 
it's the same combination of three colors that sets apart the naga skin color which looks very very similar to that tawny complexion now nagas are interchangeably used to mean the normal snakes slash serpents due to a misunderstanding we said this thing in the previous episode also the normal snakes are the children of kashyapa and surasa and not kadru whose children are called nagas now kadru bore a thousand sons such as sesha vasuki kaliya and takshaka karkotaka etc and one daughter by physical birth airavati and another daughter from her thought manasa who were the originators of the naga race sesha you know who he is with and vasuki also you know who he is with hint vasuki is the snake that is with who is the guru of the saptarishis that's the hint anyway you can put it by way of comments now since kadru was very jealous of her sisters who were the daughters of daksha prajapati and panchagni mothers of devas asuras garuda etc her children were also very jealous basically in nature the special attributes of nagas are that they illuminate their underground dwellings and pathways tunnels by sticking shining jewels onto the walls and ceilings nagas are the guardians of all underground wealth minerals gems metals etc they are master miners metallurgists gold silver and iron smiths the eldest and royals of nagas have naturally grown nagaratnams or nagamani on their forehead which gives them super powers equal to that of the devas and asuras the eldest and royals of nagas have naturally grown nagaratnams and this is this is what is depicted here you can see and and uh, something that's just amazing about the nagas now where did the nagas live originally they lived not in nagaland but in a very large lake in the middle of himalayas sage kashyapa had his ashram on the banks of the lake kashyapa drained all the water of the lake and it became a big valley that is the beautiful valley called kashyapa mira or kashmir as in modern day parlance dal lake is a current day remnant of the original lake now you know much more about the nagas than in part 1 there are a couple more parts after this and that will tell you about the curse and also what happened why did the fight between nagas and pandavas took place all that stuff and more thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar